Jeremiah in the second chapter, verses 9 through 13. Wherefore, I will yet plead with you, saith the Lord, and with your children's children will I plead. For pass over the isles of Chitma, and see and send into Kedar, and consider diligently, and see if there be such a thing. Hath a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. Be astonished, O ye heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be very desolate, saith the Lord, for my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me the fountains of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns and broken cisterns that can hold no water. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, as we read your word today, Lord, we pray, Lord, that as we look at our own lives, that we can compare this to ourselves. As we read in your word, Lord, we, we realize that so many times, Lord, that we sometimes ourselves forsake you, Lord, and we pray you, that you would forgive us, Lord, of those times in our lives when we seem to look upon other things rather than seeking after you in our lives. Lord, we ask a blessing on the reading of your word today, and we pray, Lord, that you would stir our hearts and move us as your people. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, we read in God's word that uh, Israel had as we just read, they had done two evils against God. One, they had forsaken the fountains of living waters. And the Israel had hewed themselves out cisterns. And, you know, these cisterns, were, were as the Bible says, were broken. And, uh, but today, as we look at this, we're not physically looking at springs of water. We're not physically looking at cisterns that were, at, in the Palestinian times, were something that was very nece necessary. These cisterns that they used to carve out of rocks were very labor intensive. It took many, much time to do it, but they did it because there was no rivers. There was no pure source of water. And I think as, we, as, as the Lord spoke to them here and, and through Jeremiah that they came to realize that what they had truly done as a nation. As they began to, as God compared what they have done, something that they could understand in their own lives, that they could realize what really took place. If you've ever been around a cistern before, I don't know if everyone's ever experienced or had to drink water from one of them before, but it's pretty nasty stuff. If you can imagine water being warm with no taste at all, and maybe even a little bit of odor go along with it, that's what a cistern really consists of, if it doesn't have fresh water running into it. But they, had, they, they were in Palestinian times, they had no choice but to dig these things in the middle of the ground, to dig them straight down the shaft and wide them out the bottom so they would hold plenty of water so they would sustain them in the times when there was drought because it was a high, hot, and dry land. But when rain came, they needed to preserve everything possible. I had the opportunity several years ago to go to Jamaica, and they would also collect rainwater and keep them in cisterns, so to speak. Usually they were a little bit nicer, probably, than the ones they had. They weren't dug down in the earth. They were kept in concrete. And sometimes big, uh, big uh, silos that would go straight down 30 feet in the ground, and they'd have wire over top of them. But that was what they kept the water in, and that's what they would drink from. But if you looked at those things, you would see scum draw on top of them. And lily pads, I don't, you know, can you imagine? And, but that's what they drank. But if they say, if, you know, if you get to the point when you're dry enough, You'll drink just about anything to get, to get that moisture and that wetness within you. We find here that God came and was speaking to Israel here. They had done something that, did, that displeased God. And I often wonder, time as I read this scripture, can we not also maybe today in our own lifestyles, can we many today in our country, around the world, can they not put their own names in this very same place that God was talking about Israel, that so-and-so had done two evils, they had forsaken the fountains you know, of the waters, which is Christ. God is what is our source, isn't he? God is what keeps us fresh as Christians today. And Israel had come to the point in their lives where they had forsaken that. God was the one who supplied and kept the, the water that they wanted. Instead, Israel walked away from God and, and found that they were car trying to carve out their own spiritual lives, so to speak. Not just spiritual lives, but they were trying to carve out their own paths. They were trying to live on their own achievements and to fulfill their lives 
and, and what they have walked away from God. And I often wonder today, how often do, do our, we as people do the very exact same thing? When God is our true source of, of, our, of living and life for us today, spiritually, if it wasn't for God, where would we be today if God wasn't our true source today? It's important that we cling close to him. If we go back and look at physically at the, at the cisterns that the, they would carve out in the ground, they would come to the point they were so valuable. These, these th things that they would collect water in was so valuable to people they would guard them so someone else couldn't come and do something to them. And I, I, I often like to think that God is our guard, so to speak. God is the one who protects us today. As people, he protects those things around us, each and the things in our lives each and every day. And, uh, you know, as I, as I look at this, Israel, God came to Jeremiah. He came to contend with Israel. Think about that for a minute. God came to contend with Israel. Why? Because they had created two evils. And as we've said, the first of all, they left him. And I really want you to compare this into your own lives today and think about this for a minute. This is serious. God came to contend with Israel because they had left him. They have left the, the, the fountain of the, the spring of water, what God supplied them. And then they went again and they tried to go out and, and create their own cisterns, and, so to speak. Not just physically water cisterns, but their, their lifestyles. They came, went out and they left God and they went to try to create their own path, their own journey in life. They tried to sustain themselves with their own achievements and the things that they had, could do in life. And it failed, as we read in, in Scripture. And I, look, I think I compare that today as so many people going out in life, trying to achieve great things, trying to achieve ma massive things in their lives, trying to make names for themselves, trying to earn a good living to prepare for whatever retirements and other things that they try to do. But oftentimes when they do that, they forsake God through this process. They forsake who God is and what, how the blessings that God has get, wants to give to them. And I will often wonder today, if you achieve all these things, and, and perhaps there are people that you know that have achieved great things in life, and it seems like they have obtained everything in life possible. They have a fine house. They have fine cars. They have a huge bank account. They are prepared, and it seems like that life is going so good for them. But do they know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? And of all the things that we can achieve on this life, of all the things that we can obtain in this life, what good does it do us if God is not a part of it? What did we really gain in life? And this is exactly what Israel was doing. They had walked away from God. They were trying to achieve their own thing in life, trying to make, keep, make their name great. And it disappointed God. Now think about that for a minute. God being disappointed. And then he came to them. He came to deal with them. He came to tell them what they had done wrong. He didn't, he didn't come to argue. He did with them. He didn't come to give them another chance, but he came to them to tell them that he was displeased and that they had done, done something wrong against him. And this was not good. You know, today, if in our own lives, are we really walking the path that we should be as Christians? Are we real, have, or have we forsaken God in our lives? Have we tried to create our own, our own paths in life without having God being a part of it? It's important that God is a part of everything that we do, isn't it? That's what God wants to be. He wants to be a part of it. He is the, what, he is the resources that, that we need as Christians today to keep us in line and to keep us refreshed in our lives. You know, if, if, you, if you ever built a fire outside before, a bonfire, and I'm not talking one of them little fires. I'm talking about bonfire. There's no other thing I don't believe. Than just, it has to be big. But if you don't continually pile the wood onto it, it begins to shrink, doesn't it? It begin, begins to disappear, and soon you're just left with hot coals. That's good for cooking marshmallows and other things, but that's not a bonfire, is it? <laughs> you know, in our Christian walk, if God is not continually get, supplying us, we're not going to be what we really, God really wants us to be. If we're God's not our, our true source, when we're eventually, as, as we begin to, if you've ever, ever, when you remember the first time you've ever accepted him, you felt like you were just on fire. You felt like you couldn't contain yourself. You felt like the love that God had placed within you was just bubbling out of you. And you did, just didn't know what to do with it. And if, if you continue to strive with the Lord, if you continue to read God's word and God dwell, dwell with you, you remain there. 
You remained with that joy that God first gave to you. And you could, just like you wanted more and more of it. But through the process, many people have walked away from God. So many people today, they have accepted Jesus Christ, but then they seem just to step back. And they begin to lose that joy that God has once sustained them with. And it's no different today as the same things we face today. Many people have walked away from God and forsaken Him. God is not their true source. God is not continually fueling you as, as a Christian, filling the need, giving you what you need in life, sustaining you. And if God's not sustaining you, you begin to shrivel, to get smaller, just like that bonfire. If you don't continue to pile the wood on, it's not going to stay up here, but it's going to shrink down and just become a bed of coals, and eventually it'll get cold. It'll be nothing but just a pile of dirty ashes. And with rain, it gets worse. But you know, if God is our sustainer and, he, and, and our spiritually thinking in our lives, if he's continually filling us, we're going to stay on fire for him. Now, now today, I want you to ask yourselves, am I on fire for the Lord? Is God my true source? Is he the spring of water within me? God, God wants to fill us. And I often think of springtime. Spring is, spring is an amazing time of year. Spring is when flowers begin. It's when new life begins. It's when everything starts to come out of the ground. And once we see those flowers coming out of the ground, what does that do for you? It gives you hope that the cold weather is going to soon be done. That the trees are going to begin to bud. And life is, as, seems like it just begins all over again. And it, it, it does something for you. I was watching uh, Channel 4 News the other day, and they were saying that one of the ladies was saying, wow, we had two days of good weather. It really did something for me. And It does. When, you have, when, when spring comes and new life begins, and when there's a re, new resource for, the, for new life to get a hold of, it brings a joy, so to speak. Even, even creation begins to open up and to rejoice and to give praise to the Lord for the, of the creator of itself, what God had given to us. And today in our lives, when God is our source, when, God's, when the springs of a fountain and spiritually in our lives, when God is our true source, don't you feel excited? Don't you have joy within you? Don't you, don't you, aren't you allowed to, able to cope with the things that you have to face every day in life with a joyful, a new outlook in life? Because God is within you. He's sustaining you. And as long as God has continued to sustain you, continue to pour out his blessings upon your lives, you will remain true to him. But it's when, when God stops, when you, when you quit receiving the blessings of God, how long can you be sustained spiritually? Much like your cisterns they were talking about in Israel, as God compared their, their, their achievements as broken cisterns. And do you realize that when the source quits, the water then becomes stagnant? And in, in, in physically, when water comes into a cistern, if its source has quit, it becomes stagnant. No different in our spiritual walk. When God is, when God is stopped in our lives, we're going to become stagnant. We cannot sustain ourselves. There's nothing within us in our, for our spiritual lives, there's nothing within us that we can sustain ourselves. Only by God can we be sustained. Our human nature is not there to, to walk with God. Our human nature is so, in this world is sometimes will go is, is to walk away from God and do all the things that we shouldn't do. But it's only by the power of God in our lives that we can overcome that. It's only by God sustaining us each and every day that we can become and be the people that God wants us to be in life. Do you realize that everything you do in your life affects you. Everything that you do affects you one way or another. If you take a nap, and when you get up, hopefully you feel better, right? Makes you, gives you a new outline. If you don't take a nap, sometimes it's some people you just don't want to be around, right? And you think, well, I'm older, I don't take naps. Some people do. And, uh, and it works for kids as well. I can remember in school when they tell us, we, I hated it, but they'd always tell you, you got to lay down. You give your milk and cookies and you lay down. I can remember that in elementary school. I loved the milk and cookies, but I hated the laying down part. And you'd sit there and you'd look around and, and, uh, and, and you'd do everything possible but try to take that nap. But, one, but I hate to admit it, but once you did take that nap, you kind of felt better. The teacher wasn't, wasn't, much, wasn't too happy about it because everyone had lots of energy. Today, in our life, you know, but it affects us. And everything that we do, from, from, from experiencing sorrow in our life to experiencing joy, to other things that we face. Everything that we experience in life affects us in one way or another. If you look at uh, 
you know, if you uh, would be a person going after to seek water in these cisterns that we talked about in, in, that the Bible compares to in time, if you go there and there's no water and you go expecting something, isn't, wouldn't that be disappointing? Wouldn't that be a letdown in your life? And I believe this is exactly what Israel was facing. They tried to, to achieve great things in their lives on their own, but when they went to fall back on those achievements, it wasn't there. Their, their cisterns were broken. The Bible was comparing it to that. And how they went and they sought after other things to create other gods in their lives. And the Bible says that God even challenged them to go, the, the, the two the words there, one is, is meant to be west and one is meant to be east. God challenged them to go to the west and the east and to find other people that did this very same thing in their lives. Today, I wonder how often do we make other gods before our Lord? How often do we forsake God and create other gods in this world? That means that maybe it could be our vehicles, it could be our TV shows that we watch, it could be food that we eat, it could be our achievements that we try to achieve in life. But so many times we, we put other things before God. And it's important that we, we don't forsake God. That God is always present within our lives. And He is always there. Remember, He is our true source. You re what else has, you know, if you look back and when we look what God has given to us, God paid a price for our debts, didn't He? God paid the ultimate price for our debts, our, the sin that we owe, the debt that we owe, being a sinful people. God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross to pay that debt. And all we had to do was ask, ask God to be come in our lives, confess of our sins, and ask God to be Lord of our lives. And once we've done that, we are set free. We have no more debts. And, it, and not only that, it's through God has, has brought many people to his kingdom and his glory because through the blood that was shed. And, we, and, God, and the grace that God gives to each and every one of us. Isn't that amazing? That God sheds his grace upon us. He, he's so patient with us. Now, I don't know about you today, but how patient are you with, with, your, with yourself? How patient are you with other people? But God is so patient with us and so kind. And I look here in our scripture today as, you know, he was telling Israel he had enough. And maybe I hope that you're not doing the same thing that Israel did, that you had forsaken God in your life. And I hope that you're not trying to chase after other achievements in your life, that you're constantly trying to allow, allow God to be Lord of your life and allow God to be your true source, your spiritual source of life. That's important. Today, are we doing that as people? Or have we forsaken God? And you think about it, God came to contend with Israel. He came to deal with them. You know, someday that each and every one of us, God will deal with each and every one of us too. He will come to contend with us. Whether we stand before the throne of God or, or before that, one way or another, God will contend with us. What will He find? Will we be faithful to Him? We have, will we have lived a life that would be pleasing to the Lord? Or will he, will he come to us and said, you have committed two evils. First, you have forsaken me. And then you tried to achieve other things rather than seeking after me in your life. What would God find in your life today? Would he be pleased with the things that you have done in your life today? Israel was in trouble and they knew it. They knew they had done wrong. Today, have, we, have you ever disappointed God and known it? Really, be honest. Have you ever done something in your life and you realize, well, this is not what God would want from me. This is not how God would want me to act. This is, this, God, I feel like I have left God. I have done something wrong to God. So many times, and so I'm sure at one point or another, we have all been there. We have disappointed God one, one way or another. We can look at this on our own individual basis, as I mentioned before. How, are we walking in the same footsteps as Israel did? Forsaking God. That's bigger than what it sounds. That's only just a few words, but forsaking God. That's, that's, is, that is so powerful. But yet so many people do it today. The one person that, that, that can sustain us in life, the one person that can give us everything that we need, in this life is the one that we forsake first. It's like 
It'd be like it, your job today and physically looking at material things. Your job is what sustains you in this life physically. But if you quit it, what would you have? And it's no different today in our spiritual walk. God is the one who has given us all these things in life. God is the one who sustains us spiritually. But yet so many people walk away and forget about him. And it's sad to say that so many Christians today walk away and forget about him. And they forsake God throughout the week. And they don't ask God to be a part of their lives. And they try to achieve other great things in their lives. And say, look what I have done. When they should be saying, look what God has done through me. Maybe today you have been walking away from God. Trying to chisel out your own cistern in life, so to speak. Trying to live off your own achievements. Your own things that you feel like is, is so good. Your, your achievements in your workplace and other things. And trying to get the finest of everything. But is all that really good if God is not a part of your life? If you have forsaken God, what have you truly achieved in this world today? It amazes me that Israel, time after time, that they had walked away from God and they should have realized. You know, when you've done something wrong, when you get punished for it, generally you remember the next time, don't you? Generally you do. But Israel never. Constantly they would continue to walk away from God and forsake Him and try to do their own thing. But then I look at it and say, well, how different are we today as people? How much different are we today? Do we continue to walk away from God when we know God is our true source, God is our sustainer, but when something happens in our life, we go back to God and say, Lord, I need you. This is something I just can't handle myself. I need you. But then the next week, we're off doing our own thing again, trying to achieve our own journey in life, trying to, to plan out our own, our own path in this world. But have we asked God to be a part of that? Have we asked God's desire for us in our, in our lives? Or are we, are we trying to do other things? As Christ says, they have forsaken me, the fountains of living waters. This is very important for us to grasp today. To realize that God is our true fountain of life. Have we forsaken God today? As individuals, we, if you look at our great nation. I believe we have forsaken God. The nation we used to call America the great, the great nation. And America used to, when America, people said America, they knew exactly what America stood for and what America was. But today, as it, I believe we have fallen away from that. As we have forsaken our Lord and our Savior, not only as a nation, but as individuals, as people. It comes down to a personal relationship. It doesn't have to do with just a nation, does it? But it comes down with a personal relationship for each and every one of us. We are each and every one of us are responsible for seeking after God in our lives. And if we have forsaken God, we are all responsible for the fall of a great nation. And it doesn't have to do anything with the nation. It has to do with honoring God and not forsaking Him. You know... Through Christ, through the blood that was shed on Calvary, we've all been granted the access to heaven. That's important. We have all been given the the gift the, that the, you are allowed and permitted to be in heaven because you you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But when you when you forsake Him, then privileges are taken away. You are no longer accept, able to access heaven if you're not walking or a child of God. When you forsake God and you walk away and you try to achieve other things in this world. And you know, that means you, you and I, each and every one of us are responsible for ourselves. I've heard a lot of people say, well, so-and-so, I did this because so-and-so did it. I did this because so-and-so was having a hard time and I just wanted to be, do, be along with them to help them out. That's not going to fly in heaven, is it? When you stand before the throne and you said, and you said, Lord, I just did it because so-and-so did it and everyone else was doing it, so I thought I would do it too. God's not going to accept that, is it? Or oh, Lord, I just got a little bit lazy and I didn't, I didn't mean to, you know, I knew I should have went to church more often. I knew I should have really read the Bible. I knew I should have really, I should have made that commitment to serve you sooner in life before it was too late. But life was over before I got a chance to do that. 
and I'm sorry. What do you think God will tell us when he says, you have forsaken me? And that's serious. It's something that each and every one of us need to look at in our lives. Have I forsaken God as my Lord and Savior? Am I serving God today? Am I, tr am I trusting Him as a true source of the fountains of living waters today in my life? And if not, you better get it right. We don't know what tomorrow may bring, do we? We don't know what, what, if we're going to be here, if we're going to be able to sit in our pews next week. We don't know what, what we may encounter through our jobs and the time that we travel back and forth to work each and every day. Have we truly made it right with the Lord? Have we, are we truly striving to walk with God and is God Lord of our lives? Can, we, can you honestly say at this very moment that Jesus Christ is Lord of my life? And no, without, a, no, without any doubt at all. Ask yourselves that. I don't... Right now, ask yourselves, is Jesus Christ Lord of my life? If you're doubting and you're not sure, then you need to ask God to become, to enter into your life and to make sure. Because you don't want to go into, I don't know, I might be, I think so. You need to know for sure that God is Lord of your life. That's important that we ask ourselves today. Have you ever heard sometimes if the, if the shoe fits, you must wear it? You know, I've heard that expression before. Israel was in that same state right now. God just went to him and said, you have committed evils against me. You have won. You've, as again, I said before, you've forsaken me. And then you try to achieve other things rather and go serve other gods rather than serving me. And there is no other God. Only me. Sometimes even today, there are people today that have to wear those same shoes because they have forsaken God. It often makes me wonder, how can someone say that there is no God? How can someone deny God each and every day in their lives when they can look around and see the beauty, the creation of God in itself? We went to a uh, game feast last night and the speaker was saying about how uh, was talking about how science comes up with all the different arguments against mankind, how we evolved out of all kinds of crazy things, you know. And he said, the Bible clearly states that he has made me in his image. It doesn't say we were a monkey at one time. It doesn't say we crawled out of the sea. But he said, God created us. And I thought, wow, that's, that's so true. That God created us in his image. And how often do we forsake that? That we are truly designed to be a child of God. Created by the creator of the universe. That each and every one of us has a responsibility to stand before God and to say, yes, I am your child. Today, can you honestly say that? If you were today, if you were called to stand before God right now, could you honestly stand before him and say, Lord, I am your child? And God would say, yes, you are. What would the Lord tell you today? And you may have heard this, and what's sad is many people have heard that over and over again. Well, I've heard this before. Is he about done? But yet it's true that there will be a day that we will all have to stand up today. And we must, as individuals, be real with ourselves. We need to look at ourselves in the mirror and see what we truly do see. We're not looking at the physical things, but we're looking at spiritual things. What would you see in, in your spiritual life? What would it look like inside what could you honestly say if you could see yourself? What would it be? A person who, who, who honors God? Who fears the Lord? Someone who reads God's word? Someone who seeks after God? Someone who has the joy of the Lord within them? What would you find in your own lives today? I often wonder today if we realize how often we are so unfaithful to our Lord and our Savior as individuals. The Bible says if we, we say to ourselves that we haven't sinned in life, that we basically are calling God a liar. God already knows that each and every one of us has sinned. And sometimes each and every day we sin against God. And we must ask God for forgiveness. But so often in our lives, each and every day, even those who walk with the Lord, sometimes are still unfaithful to God the way that they should be. And it's important that we strive to be what God wants us to be. 
Israel was found going against God, and God didn't, didn't like it. Do you think God is happy with your own lifestyles today? But the way that you're living, if, he, if you are, if you're pleased, if you think that, if you know without a shadow of a doubt, God would be pleased with you that you're living a life for the Lord. That's amazing. That's great. And I hope that each and every one of you are here today. But would, but in your life, but honestly, ask yourselves, what would good, what would God find in me right now? If God would call me home right now, where would I spend eternity? Would I spend it with my wife, my children? Would I be lost forever? It goes the other way around for each and every one of us. Where would you be today? Would God be pleased? Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word today. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you're, that you're so patient with us. And Lord, as we've read in your word, how you was, you was disappointed and came to, to punish Israel for what they had done against you. It makes me wonder today, as individuals and each and as a nation, have we not done the very exact same thing to you today? Do we not forsake you? Do we not try to live our own achievements and make other things that we try to achieve God's rather than serving you? And how often do we forsake you, Lord? I pray today that you, know, that you would find each and one of us worthy to be a part of your family. That each and every person here today is walking in your footsteps. Not forsaking you, but, ex but ex receiving you Lord, as, as a fountain of, li, of the source of living physical water that you, or spiritual water that you want to give to us today. We pray, Lord, today that we're not looking at our own achievements in this world, realizing that all the things of this world is in vain unless it is seasoned or blessed by you. We pray today, Lord, that each and every person here is seeking after you, asking for guidance in their lives, looking for the path that you want them to, to travel in this world and accepting that, Lord, for their lives, realizing that your way is perfect. We thank you today, Lord, for the, your word. We pray that it, it, you would stir in our hearts, Lord, a desire to want to walk in your footsteps, a desire to want to draw closer to you, a desire, Lord, to receive what you want to give to us in this world today and not trying to achieve other things on our own. We pray today, Lord, that we don't forsake you. And Lord, that we strive to be with you in our lives. And if we're not, Lord, I pray that you would reveal those things to us. That you would convict our hearts, Lord. That you would open our eyes that we may truly see where we stand with you today. We just ask your blessings on each person here in Jesus' name. Amen.